This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24 7. Hello and welcome to our show, Health and Wellness, Myths versus Facts. I'm Gargi Rawat. Endocrine glands produce and secrete hormones that are responsible for many important body functions. It plays a vital role in whether or not you develop diabetes, thyroid disease, growth disorders, sexual dysfunction, and a host of other hormone-related disorders. Thyroid disorders are the most common among all the endocrine diseases in India. According to a pro projection from various studies on thyroid disease, it has been estimated that about 42 million people in India suffer from thyroid diseases. One third of thyroid patients in India still remain unaware of their condition. A thyroid disorder is a silent disease whose symptoms are subtle and can be easily overlooked during diagnosis. A timely diagnosis and complete treatment with the appropriate medications can ensure a successful outcome and our experts today will provide medically accurate and actionable advice to help prevent the development of thyroid disorders as well as guide our viewers with effective long-term management strategies. We're joined by Dr. Bipin Sethi, consultant, endocrinologist, care hospitals, Banjara Hills, Hyderabad. Dr. Shehla Sheikh, endocrinologist, KGN Diabetes and Endocrinology Center, Saifi Hospital, Mumbai. And Dr. Sanjay Bhadada, professor and head department of endocrinology, PGIMER, Chandigarh. Thank you so much, doctors, for joining us uh, on the show today. And Dr. Sethi, I'd like to start with you. As we all know, the thyroid gland is part of an intricate network of glands called the endocrine system. So what is the function of the thyroid gland? Well, thyroid gland is a gland situated in our neck and it is regulated by a gland called pituitary. It produces hormones which are sort of energizers to the body and regulates various body functions and its importance is there at all stages of life from neural development to growth to pubertal development, a reproductive age and also health of the heart and regulation of blood pressure. Uh, it is regulated as I said by the brain through a hormone called uh, TRH and TSH and the gland may not function. If uh, that happens, then the TSH and TRH go up. Contrary to this, if the pituitary gland is not functioning, there could be a decrease in the thyroid hormone levels. And in that situation, the TSH is uh, low or normal. This distinction is important because the regulation is through these hormones and they talk to each other and we can diagnose conditions based on what the levels are uh, and where the disease lies. All right. Uh, Dr. Bhadada, your thyroid creates and produces hormones. They play a role in many different systems throughout our bodies. Uh, what issues can present themselves when a person has thyroid problems? Okay. So like any other endocrine gland, the thyroid gland have two problems. One is if it is hyperfunctioning or another thing it is hypofunctioning so these are the two important issues if gland is uh, not producing enough thyroid hormone then patient may have the symptoms like tiredness fatigue uh, lethargy uh, maybe minimal weight gain and if it is long standing then patient can have various other problems related like anemia they can have the low heart rate and the cold intolerance, all these features can be there because of the hypofunctioning of the thyroid gland. If suppose thyroid gland is over functioning in producing more thyroid hormone, in that case, the, all the symptoms those were there in the hypothyroidism will be reversed. Like in case of uh, hypothyroidism, patient is having cold intolerance, so he is feeling more uh, heat or this heat intolerance. And like uh, in case of hypothyroidism, heart rate will be low. Though here, in case of hyperthyroidism, patient will feel palpitation because of the increased heart rate. In hypothyroidism, minimal weight gain can be there for the long-standing disease. In hyperthyroidism, patient may lose the weight. So, or the patient may can have the diarrhea. So, these are the symptoms related to hyperthyroidism as well as uh, 
earlier the symptoms because of hypothyroidism. In addition to this, this thyroid gland, as Dr. Sethi mentioned, that is in the present in the neck of the uh, neck. So, and these various vital structures are there. So, if the thyroid gland size increases because of some or other reason, then it can cause a compressive symptoms. And this patient can present to the compressive symptoms like the change in voice, difficulty in the swallowing, uh, this kind of features patient can have. And this increase in size may be because of the, can be benign or can be malignant. Benign just a, because of the uh, long-standing iodine deficiency we call in uh, layman's language there is a ganga or the kind of goiter is there or sometimes it can be because of the malignancy. So these are the various symptoms related to the uh, uh, thyroid abnormality whether it is hypofunctioning or hyperfunctioning or because of the mass effect increase in the size of the thyroid gland because of the various uh, reasons or the various etiologies. All right. Now, Dr. Sheikh, uh, thyroid disease is one of the most common pathologies. It's always a good option if we can prevent abnormality. So how can one keep the thyroid healthy and what are the diet changes that may be required? Gargi, thanks for that. I think, uh, you know, there are so many myths, Gargi, regarding diet and thyroid, especially with the, you know, absolute uh, plethora of social media information. You would frankly find a new thyroid diet every day online. Uh, having said that, you, uh, I think it is very important that we convey to our audience today that there is nothing like a diet for thyroid disorders. Having said that, a diet which is adequate in protein, nutrition, high in fiber, adequate as far as vegetables is concerned, as far as fruits is concerned, a moderate, healthy, balanced diet is the best way forward. But it is very important that we also understand that iodine, the trace element, which is very important for the production of the thyroid hormone. It is very important that we have adequate amounts of iodine in circulation because the when you are iodine deficient, especially in a pregnant lady and for infants and children, it can have a number of it is very, very important that they are adequately supplemented because it can have a number of manifestations. The actual iodine requirement in an adult is around 150 micrograms per day, which is adequately, if you're having an adequate diet, if you're having a nutritionally balanced diet, and especially also if you're having, for example, half teaspoon of iodized salt, that would be sufficient. In a pregnant woman, the requirements go up. And in a pregnant woman, the requirements would be around 220 to 250 micrograms per day. And this, it's very important that we supplement our pregnant ladies well because it has implications for the neonate. And the neonate's development, both physical and mental, depend on adequate thyroid hormone in circulation. So we need to be aware of the fact that we need to have adequate iodine in our diet so that we can actually be able to handle this problem of thyroid hypothyroidism that we are dealing in our country at this point of time. And as Sir said, it can also lead to goiters. It can also lead to physical and mental ill health. All right. So it's important to have the correct information and not fall for, you know, what you may see on social media regarding how diets can combat any, you know, these sort of diseases. But uh, Dr. Bharada, what are the early warning signs of thyroid problems? And, uh, disorder most of the symptoms are uh, like for the on specific so you may not have any specific symptom so but the warning sign what we want to ask then mainly like sudden increase in the thyroid gland size that is one of the issue and that indicate that uh, underlying malignancy is there or second issue sometimes is that change in voice sudden change in voice because of the increase in the size of the thyroid gland or this uh, thyroid gland is having some malignancy that is interfering in the uh, or uh, going to the towards the vocal cord and that can change in the uh, change in the voice or hoarseness of the voice other thing can be uh, because of the uh, warning sign you can say that uh, uh, a sudden increase in the size can cause compression of the uh, your uh, vital structures those are in the, your neck and that can cause the problem and sometime it can because of the pressure certain malignancies that is term used tracheomalacia or the trachea which is the wind pipe which say that can be uh, degraded or injured because of the increase in the thyroid gland size so these are the main warning sign in case of thyroid malignancy 
but in case of uh, hyperthyroidism that can be a uh, sudden rise in the temperature that can be sometime very dangerous and patient can land up into the thyroid storm or in case of hypothyroidism if it is long standing not taken care not looked after then patient can land up into the myxedema coma kind of situation because of the very low thyroid hormone so these are the certain situations according to the disease of the thyroid these are the few warning signs are there all right so these are the warning signs our dr sethi uh, so if these are the warning signs when should one get their thyroid levels checked yeah that's a very interesting question routine checkup for thyroid function is necessary in all newborns to detect neonatal hypothyroidism because that would be a serious lapse on the part of healthcare system if we miss that out all pregnant people or people who are planning pregnancy people with infertility must also get their thyroid function test done the symptoms of thyroid are are, are very vague you see if you look at anybody and ask them are you having constipation are you having dry skin are you having gross of hair men or women they'll say yes 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 but that doesn't mean that they have hypothyroidism Uh, similarly some weight loss some palpitation some sweating doesn't mean that you are having thyroid trouble so a conglomeration of symptoms when present one should look for and get the thyroid hormone tested and usually we do the tests of the hormones called the t3 and t4 free or total the regulating hormone which we just referred to from the brain that is tsh so as dr barara said if the thyroid hormone concentration is high for whatever reason the tsh will be suppressed and if the thyroid hormone concentration is low and it is because of the thyroid gland problem the tsh levels will be high if however the pituitary is the cause of the hypothyroidism then this may be a one of the abnormalities we will look at other abnormalities but the tsh level will not be a guide either to the diagnosis or to the treatment so to cut a long story short asymptomatic people do not have to check for their thyroid hormones people assuming that their metabolism is low or high need not check it if they have symptoms it should be confirmed but outside this neonates pregnant people people planning pregnancy must always have this also people who are admitted for unrelated illness must never have thyroid function tested unless they have symptoms clear cut symptoms because there are a lot of changes that happen during uh, the sickness itself which might confuse the picture and lead to wrong diagnosis all right very important things to keep in mind when to test for thyroid well uh, with that we'll just slip into a short break and return with more questions for our doctors stay with us Welcome back to our special health and wellness show. We're talking about endocrine glands that produce and secrete hormones that are responsible for many aspects of our health and what we don't often understand uh, is, is how it can cause disease and problems for us. Dr. Sheikh, exercise is a major solution uh, for most uh, non-communicable diseases. Can walking prevent or reduce thyroid problems? Uh, Gargi, uh, walking definitely, as you said, helps with all non-communicable diseases. walking is a very good way forward when you talk in terms of managing your hypothyroid patients as well as your hyperthyroid patients because it is the safest exercise that we can do having said that i also want to reiterate that we cannot replace walking we cannot replace the thyroid hormones with walking often patients assume that if they exercise they would be able to replace their medication which i think is very very wrong and not possible where exercise actually helps you is in reducing the effects of hypothyroidism for example there is fatigue there are mood disorders there are bone pains there are joint pains all this helps help in a very very big way by exercise so when we are i mean when we are advocating exercise we are advocating it as an adjunct to helping your patients handle their thyroid disorder better but it is very important that your patient is youth thyroid takes their medication well before they embark on any kind of exercise program because a patient who is not well controlled either significantly hypothyroid or hyperthyroid if they suddenly indulge in an exercise program on the contrary it can be detrimental to the health and can suddenly land up with some kind of major medical catastrophe which we definitely don't want 
All right, Dr. Sethi, so how are th thyroid hormones and cortisol related? Well, we had in the beginning alluded to the fact that the pituitary gland regulates the function of thyroid hormone. It also regulates the function of adrenal gland, which produces the steroids, glucocorticoids, as also it, 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 it influences the function of ovaries and testes. So, uh, thyroid gland and adrenal gland can also be affected by autoimmune process. So, these two uh, are the ways in which the thyroid gland and adrenal gland can be affected either by disorders above their uh, in, in the brain, regulating the hormones which control their function, mainly TSH and ACTH, or primarily the autoimmune factors might involve both these glands. It is also true that sometimes stress can precipitate autoimmunity and some people feel that steroids cause uh, precipitation of the illness. Many a times patients with Graves disease can recall the demise of a near relative or a sudden loss in business. But that is because of disruption of the immune regulation by steroids. So you could have uh, hypothyroidism and hypocortisol state because of disease in the region of pituitary and hypothalamus because the trophic hormones or the regulating hormones are absent. And there could also be involvement of both these land autoimmune process. And this is important because if you correct only the thyroid condition like hypothyroidism and do not pay attention to the concurrent hypocortisol state that lead to catastrophic sequences, consequences because the person whose cortisol production is not enough will suddenly have his metabolism improved and a subtle deficiency with which he was carrying on in life will be precipitated. So this is how this can be related either by an autoimmune process or by a disease of the regulating hormones in the uh, brain or in the hypothalamus or pituitary axis. So that is what is called secondary hypothalamus, secondary hypocortisol state. The first one is called primary hypothyroidism and addison disease. All right. Uh, Dr. Bhadada, thyroid and diabetes connected. Can thyroid disorders then lead on to diabetes? Thank you, Gargi. And I think you asked the most difficult question, but most sought out question because many people wanted to know what is the status or what is the relationship between these two most important endocrine glands because you know the diabetes is most common problem and the thyroid is second most common. So if you go by the statistics, since these two disorders are very common, so there is very high likely that even without any relationship, this disease can be there in the each other. Those are having diabetes, they can have frequent thyroid disorders, or those are having thyroid disorders, they can have the uh, frequently can they can have the diabetes also. So now, uh, if we talk about diabetes, is of mainly three or four types. One is type one diabetes, second is type two diabetes, third is gestational diabetes, and the secondary diabetes. But I'll just briefly talk about type one and type two diabetes. Because type 1 diabetes is a background of autoimmunity and thyroid disorders also having a background of autoimmunity. So the most common cause of hypothyroidism is related to the autoimmunity as well as for the hyperthyroidism also related to the autoimmunity. So if we will take a common soil for both as an autoimmunity, then if a patient who is having the type 1 diabetes, he is more likely to have the hypothyroidism and also hyperthyroidism and it is very well documented from the plethora of literature from India as well as from the abroad that patients with type 1 diabetes are having approximately 10 to 15 percent patients are having the hypothyroidism and coming to the uh, hyperthyroidism we know that hyperthyroidism is there then the the hormone is in excess and there is increased metabolism because of this increased metabolism there is insulin degradation will be more rapid and there is more absorption from the gut also the rapid absorption of food from the gut is also there and that's why it can predispose for the diabetes mainly because of the type 2 diabetes. So there is a relationship between diabetes and thyroid is close but there is no clear-cut scientific reason or the theory that 
while patients of type 2 diabetes have a more frequent hypothyroidism. Though there are certain studies are there that type 2 diabetes are predisposed for the autoimmunity, but uh, I don't think there is enough literature to support that. But yes, autoimmune phenomena is there in the diabetes as well as in the thyroid disorders. That's why there is more frequently takes place in each other condition. In addition to as I mentioned that both the disorders are very common, so they are likely to happen in either way, either in diabetes, more hypothyroidism or in hypothyroidism, more diabetes. All right. Uh, now, Dr. Sheikh, uh, when your metabolism gets disturbed, many things can happen. Uh, can thyroid problems uh, affect you in, in terms of your breathing? Uh, yes, Garvi. As uh, uh, both my teachers are saying that thyroid problems can affect all the organs of the body. Respiratory system is no is also affected significantly, but it is depends upon what kind of thyroid disorder you have developed. For example, in hypothyroidism, it can cause respiratory muscle fatigue. The respiratory muscles are required for respiration, and it can cause those muscles to get fatigued. It can cause hypoxia. It can cause hypercapnia. It can cause what we commonly call as obstructive sleep apnea because as a result of the weight gain, as a result of the hypothyroidism, as a result of the thick, thickening of the tongue. So all these things can contribute in a significant way to a feeling of breathlessness. Also, a number of our patients sometimes in significant hypothyroidism can have, for example, pleural effusion. They can also come to us with because of the weight gain which they have they will complain to you of significant breathlessness. So we, all our patients, especially in uncontrolled hypothyroidism, can have significant affection of the respiratory system. All right, uh, Dr. Sethi, how does one assess thyroid function and, you know, which tests are required for this? Well, the commonest way to diagnose thyroid disease is by measuring the hormones that are produced by the thyroid gland as also the regulatory hormones. So if you have increased concentration of the thyroid hormones, namely T3 and T4, which are also measured as free hormones, it's free T3, T4, it means that there is excess availability to the tissues of thyroid hormone. This can result from overproduction by the gland, what we call hyperthyroidism, as occurs in Graves' disease, toxic maternal goiter, or a nodule that's functioning more autonomously functioning nodule. Or it can also result from conditions wherein there's leakage of the hormone from the thyroid. The thyroid hormone is coming from some other sources. And this thing is called thyrotoxicity without hyperthyroidism. And this is usually transient if it is due to uh, thyroiditis. Hypothyroidism, on the contrary, is mostly on account of diseases of the gland itself, wherein the gland does not produce T3 and T4. So you order for a T3, T4 is also the regulatory hormone PSH. In the diseases of the thyroid, you will have elevated TSH, what we call as primary hypothyroidism. And if there is deficiency of the secretion of TSH from the pituitary gland, you will have either low, normal, or slightly elevated TSH concentration. So you can diagnose excess availability by demonstrating elevated T3 and T4, and low availability by low T3 and T4. The TSH is usually low in patients who have got thyrotoxicosis, but it can be high if you have got primary disorder of the gland, or it can be low, normal, or uh, even borderline high. Other tests that we do sometimes to find out the condition would be a scan of the thyroid, which can distinguish between the hyperthyroidism and thyroiditis, wherein the uptake is high in, in thyroid, hyperthyroidism and low, or you can do antibodies to the thyroid uh, called the TSH receptor antibodies for Graves' disease. Other antibodies like the anti uh, TPO antibodies are also useful when we have borderline TSH elevation because that in indicates that there is hypothyroidism because of an autoimmune problem. So these are some of the tests that are done there. Of course, other tests are there like you're doing a scan and FNAC when you're suspecting sure. uh, a mitotic process or right. some cancer. But usually, Function is assessed by doing the T3, T4, and we get a fairly good idea by doing T3, T4, and TSH. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, doctors, for joining us today and talking about thyroid disorders and how hormones can affect our health and lots of invaluable information there. Uh, thank you all for watching. Goodbye.